Brenda with Native Root Salsa Company. We're uh, gonna make some dinner tonight. It's gonna be relatively quick and relatively hands-off. Um, we'll do a little bit of time on the stove and then we'll finish it off in the oven. We're gonna be doing a chicken thigh in a Fra Diablo style. I'll go over the ingredients here on the board with you in just a minute. And I'm waiting for David to get home so I can have a little kitchen inspiration, you know. I don't have a cocktail in hand, so we'll get cooking real quick. So let's take a look at our ingredients for tonight's dinner. It's going to be really simple and should be pretty quick overall. I've already prepped um, the green bell peppers. There's probably two cups there. Got 10 cloves of garlic. You don't have to use that many. We like garlic, so use your own judgment. Got some tomato paste. I've got two tubs of our native root salsa. One is the original and one is our chipotle. And I've got seven or eight chicken thighs here that I've dried off, salted and peppered, and put a little oregano on them. And we've got some crushed red pepper back there, and I've got some vermouth. So let's talk about this palette. I'm gonna be making chicken thighs in a Fra Diablo style. So it's gonna be a spicy uh, red sauce with this. And it won't taste like salsa, and it won't taste like chipotle, but that'll give me the heat that I need. Now, I probably won't use crushed red pepper because I'm gonna have all the heat that I'm gonna need from my salsa. And I didn't use like hot Italian peppers. I substituted bell peppers because I knew I was using the salsa. For our tomato component, we are using the two salsas. And for the white wine component, because I'm out of white wine, I'm using the Norley Pratt vermouth, which I absolutely love. That's my go-to for martinis or for the perfect Manhattan. So let me give you a quick rundown on what we're gonna do here. We are going to sear off these chicken thighs and brown that skin. We want it nice and crispy. And then I'm going to saute and remove those from the pan. Then I'm going to saute off my bell peppers and the garlic. I'm going to add in the tomato paste. And I'm probably going to use most of that can. And brown that off a little bit. And then I'm going to add in the tomato component, which is our salsa. Once that comes up, oh, and the, and the red wine. I'll, I mean the white wine. I'll deglaze with that. I must have red wine on the brain tonight. Um, so we'll be deglazing with that. Once that comes up to a simmer, then we're gonna add the chicken back in and I will put it in the oven and cover it to finish it. Probably cook it on 400, about 30 minutes. We wanna make sure that chicken is good and done. And then we'll chop up a little parsley for garnish and serve it alongside some pasta. So let's get cooking. All right, I'll see if I can get you guys a good view. So I've, I'm gonna do the chicken, uh, sear the chicken in batches because I don't wanna overcrowd the pan. I've got my cast iron uh, Dutch oven. It's a wide Dutch oven. And the bottom is coated with olive oil. So let me grab the chicken and I'll start putting some in. It's probably gonna splatter everywhere. That's all right. You know we're cooking if the food is flying. Okay, so I had to turn the vent fan on, so it's going to be a little bit loud. I'm going to sear this off for probably about four to five minutes. Um, I've got it on a medium to medium high heat. Again, I cook with electric, so if you cook with gas, great for you, and you'll have more control over your heat. But I'm just not going to touch it. I'm going to set a timer real quick, and we'll come back and check it. So that's been three minutes. I'm gonna check the chicken. See how we're 
Alexa, stop. You know that's my favorite timer. All right, so it's not brown enough for me. I want to leave it in there longer. So I'm going to set probably another three minutes on that timer. Alexa. And so to save time, uh, I made my own Manhattan. I love to use an Irish whiskey for my Manhattans because it cuts down on the sweetness. So I'll use Powers or Jameson. This is two or more do. Um, I use a little of the dry vermouth, which is what I'm going to use in this dish. And I'll use a little sweet vermouth and then finish it off with a lemon twist and some bitters. Um, you can shake them, you can stir them. Sometimes I just make them right in the glass with ice in it, and then I can remove the ice after a minute or two. And I've got the perfect Manhattan for me. So, cheers, guys. I almost forgot to season the back of these chicken thighs. Too busy worried about my cocktail. Alexa, I'm going to give them a little salt and pepper. And a little sprinkle of oregano. Now let's check these again. It's more like it. It's not quite there, but that one looks pretty good. Let me go ahead. And I really just want to cook these for about a minute on this side because I'm going to finish the cooking in the oven so I'm not looking to get these completely done. I just want to get a little sear on the bottom. Now the salsa does have salt in it, so we're going to be real stingy with the salt up front, but we just still want to season everything as we go. Alexa, set a timer for four minutes. I'm going to turn the heat up on this just a little bit, see if I can get a crispier skin. I did preheat my oven to 400, so it's ready to rock as soon as this is all ready. Okay, so I did turn my stove off because I am electric and it takes a while. I'm going to remove some of this oil. I want to leave as many of, of the, uh, as much of the fog on the bottom of the pan as I can. But I am going to remove some of this oil before I start sauteing my bell peppers. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
I'm going to turn my fire back on about medium. It's still really hot. You can see it's smoking. And let's go ahead and lay down some bell pepper. Put a little black pepper in. And a teeny tiny pinch of salt just to get that seasoned up and get the water coming out of those bell peppers as we're stirring them. And I want to get these cooked fairly, fairly well before I add the garlic in. We'll give them two to three minutes, maybe a little longer. And I'm going to go ahead and throw all that garlic in there. And that is a good 10 cloves of garlic. Now I sliced mine, you could roughly chop it. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and slice it up. Didn't want any small, small pieces because the salsa does have garlic in it as well. And if you've had our salsa, you know we aren't afraid of the garlic. So, let this go for just a few minutes. And the one ingredient I did not mention earlier was lemon juice. I am going to put some lemon juice in this as well. Salsa does have lime juice in it. So we're not going to go crazy with it, but... Alright, let me make myself a little spot here. And... I am using a seasoned tomato paste. You could use a plain. I just pulled this can out of the cupboard and didn't really look. It's got a little uh, basil in it, which is fine. I'm going to start browning this off. Took some of that raw flavor out of it. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells incredible. We haven't even really done anything yet. Let it sit and kind of brown up a little bit. Make sure I've got that temperature up nice because we're going to deglaze with the um, remove. Hey, it's starting to brown up. You can see we've got some little sticky bits on the bottom of the pan. Alright. And you guys know how I roll. I'm not going to measure, but I'm going to tell you half a cup to three quarters of a cup. I've got about that much in the bottle. Now yeah, we'll go down to there. And we hit that right on the nose right there. I want a little bit more. You guys will have to uh, excuse the, the two-year-old in the background. She does want some attention. Um, Mom's here. Mom's doing some doing some stuff for Grammy. And all right, that smells really good. And let that alcohol cook out of that. Now I'm going to add myself So I'm going to use the entire can or uh, tub of the original red, which is our mild. And I don't need to make tons of sauce. I'm probably going to use about half of the chipotle. I'm going to use about another cup of salsa, about half of that tub. Oh, that's splashing me. It's hot. I'm going to turn it down. Um, if this is too thick, I can certainly add a little stock or a little water in here. I'm not going to add any more salt at this point. Um, this is going to be a really lovely red sauce. I am going to go ahead and put some lemon juice in it. And then, I don't think any 
seeds in there. And about, yeah, at least a half a lemon, maybe a little more. Right. It's going to give us some nice brightness. Now, because I am going to cook this in the oven and it's going to reduce down um, and it's already pretty thick, I'm going to add probably about a cup of water. So that's about half of one of these tubs, so we're going to pour that in. Um, that gives us a little, a little wiggle room on our cooking. And so that looks really good. It's nice and hot. Now I'm going to put all of these chicken thighs back in to the pot. And we're going to bring it up to a simmer, cover it, and stick it in the oven. Ooh, don't want that, want that. To finish. And I'm going to put all those meat juices, there weren't a lot, but whatever we do have there, I want to put in. Bring this up to a simmer, and I'm going to cover it and stick it in a 400 degree oven, and set a timer for 30 minutes, and then we're going to give it a give it a little temperature check. We want the chicken to be at least at 165 uh, or more, and these are bone-in thighs, so I do want to make sure that the temperature gets up far enough. You can also use boneless thighs if you'd like, or you, if you don't like dark meat, use chicken breast. That works too. So. All right, we're at a simmer. I'm gonna cut this off. I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna stick it into the oven. And we'll be back when this is ready to take a look at the final product. So just out of the oven, I'm gonna skim some of the oil off the top and we're gonna cook some angel hair pasta and then we'll serve it up and do the taste test. So we've plated it up. That's our final dish. Did a little angel hair pasta. So we put a little grana padana on top. We're going to have our taste test here in just a second. So I did end up putting a little crushed red on this just because it's so pretty and a little bit of heat never hurt anybody. Well, cheers. Cheers. He finally made it home with a little kitchen inspiration. Yes. Although I do think I'm one ahead of him, as you guys know. Um, we finished the dish. This is chicken thighs, Fra Diablo style. And it's made with our original red salsa and a little chipotle. It's got some lemon juice and some vermouth. I did put a little crushed red pepper on the top because it wasn't quite as hot, okay. but it ought to be nice and garlicky. So, dig in. Sounds great. Give us a taste test. Marvelous. She's such a smart ass. Marvelous. Do you like it? I love it. See what I have to deal with? She, you should cook like this every night. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Oh my god. That is really good, guys. Really simple. For the most part, it was hands off after I got it in the oven. I cooked a little. Um, Thin spaghetti. It doesn't take about five minutes to cook the spaghetti. He served up the wine. Oh, that did a good job. He did. That's some Smith and Hook. Smith and Hook Cabernet. Cabernet. It's really good. Very good. If you haven't tried it. Um, 
This is delicious and it does not taste like salsa. It's really nice. And it's easy to find on the wine shelf at H-E-B because they mm. put everything in alphabetical order. I'm talking about this, not the wine. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, so if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to our channel, please. We'd love to have you as a subscriber and hit that notify bell. I think I've got something on my face here, but probably. Um, hit that notify bell so that you'll never miss one of these little recipe ideas. You can find Native Root Salsa Company at the Austin, Texas Farmers Markets on the weekend. We're at Texas Farmers Markets, Sustainable Food Center Markets, and Barton Creek Mall Markets. Check us out on the weekends. Yeah, check us out on the weekends. Uh, we've got lots of great salsas. We've got a really kick-ass queso. It is kick-ass queso. Um, we've got a mac and cheese video that I'll link in the end of this. Lots of lots of easy ideas, and I'm one ahead of him, and I'm doing way better. Um, so subscribe. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. We'd really like to see your shining face at the market. Anything else? No. Let's shut this down so I can finish my dinner. Yeah, we're going to eat. And then we're going to watch The Voice. So you guys have a great evening. Until the next video, we'll see you. See ya. I'm going to leave that in there.